Bum, ba, da, da. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the website to teach you how to play banjo, guitar, and mandolin. Now, if you listen real close to those two licks, you should notice something similar about them. Listen, listen again. Well, the thing that you're hearing similar is that we have a lot of the same notes just separated by an octave. And I'm convinced that a lot of banjo players don't think in these terms. They don't think in terms of octaves. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to take our licks that we're comfortable with down low, and we're going to see how we can use them to play all kinds of licks up high. In the same way, we're going to take what we have up high, and we're going to learn how to play them down low. This is going to almost double your lick knowledge right off the bat, and at least get you thinking about how to do different things in different situations and use the skills and the knowledge that you already have. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website. You can join as a Gold Pick member, have access to all kinds of lessons, including this one. If you're watching as a Gold Pick member here on the site, you've got everything you need right here on this page. Just scroll down and you'll see the rest of the video segments as well as the tabs for all these cool licks that we're gonna learn. Let's jump right into thinking in octaves on the banjo. Now, one of the very first licks that we learn as banjo players is what I call just the G lick. Now, there's all kinds of variations on that. We can mess with the timing. We can mess with if we hammer or if we slide and to what frets that we slide and hammer to. And I teach all about that there on the beginner learning track. But after we learn that lick, we use it all the time to put uh, tags on the end of our phrases to fill time. It works in our lead. It works in our backup. But we often don't think about its counterpart that lives an octave ahead of that. And let me just briefly define what an octave is. You see, an octave is simply just 12 half steps above a note that you're starting on. So one easy way to find that is to start on an open string. Let's say that we take our third string and we were to go up 12 half steps, which are signified and uh, identified by each fret. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When we get to the 12th fret, we are now one octave above where we started, and you can hear that, right? Now, if you know all this, just hang on with me because we're gonna to get to some more advanced stuff here in a moment. So we can go up to our 12th fret, and if we were to bar across the 12th fret and strum through, we would get the same notes that we do whenever we play open. They're just going to be an octave higher. So think about it this way. If we were to use our finger as a capo, and we were to think about that regular OG leg, and we were to come up and just bar across the 12th fret, we can get the exact same lick, if I would, could play it clearly. It's hard to bar and play that lick, but we're getting the same G lick, one octave higher. Now that's quite hard to do, and you wouldn't want to do that all the time. So. I'm, you know, I'm, Earl's not here for me to ask him or whoever came up with this, but I'm convinced that this lick came to being, maybe even accidentally, as an answer, as a counterpart for this G lick, but just one octave higher. And it has a lot of the same elements. If we think about the main elements in this lick, we've got our root. We've got a blues note that we're sliding to or that we're hammering to. So to, up to that B flat. And then we're coming down to our sixth tone. So it's working around that pentatonic scale. And we have the same elements whenever we go up the fretboard. We're starting on our root. Let's go ahead and throw the tab up for this so you can see it. And then we're going to use our pinky to go out and grab that flat third, that B flat. Okay, and then we're going to come down and play that sixth tone, that E note. We're playing it on our ninth fret of the third string. Pretty cool, huh? Now, we're not sliding and we're not hammering on like we do there. Of course, you could and get more of an exact replica, but one, one of the, the main techniques that folks use instead of sliding or hammering on up there for that blues note is that they will just grab that 11th fret and then choke it with a pinky. You don't have to do it, but it sounds like this. Just a slight choke. And in effect, we're playing the same sounding lick both down and up the neck. Now, here's the cool thing. There's lots of different ways to play these licks. And the connection that I wanna draw 
is that you can use the same technique down the neck as you can up. For instance, if we were to take this G lick instead of playing it like this, if we were to do something like this. Now I just changed the timing slightly. All that I did was change the hammer on or the slide uh, to happen right on the second beat instead of happening on the and of two. Well, we could take that same thing, go up the neck, and immediately have a different version of this G lick that we ever had before. Now, we may be used to playing that two different ways down the neck. There they are, back to back. And in the same way, we could take it now up the neck and have two variations of that very same lick. So that's gonna work all kinds of places. Let's say we're playing a song like Foggy Mountain Breakdown, you're coming up here. You're going through your different variations. Well, now you can begin playing through those G licks that you may already know down here. In the same way, if you already know some up the neck, you can take them down the neck and copy that same, um, same movements, the same timing, and immediately expand our lick library. Let's take one more. This is one that we all know. Now, we often play this over a D chord. It sounds like this, up the neck. Slowly. Or some variation thereof. That's one that I play a lot. Now a lot of times we just think about that as happening up the neck. That's just a lick that we do over the D chord when we're up here and we're playing. Okay. But did you know that we can think about that lick down the neck, and I guarantee you that you probably already do whenever you're doing stuff like this. You're using all those same notes and ideas that we've already played up here. My banjo teacher, Alan Money, he used to say, you know what's so weird is that that D lick has that B flat in it. A B flat. Now there's no B flat over a D chord, so why would you ever think in major sounding music to ever play a B flat over a D chord. Who came up with that? I don't know, but it sounds good and we do it all the time. But we may not think about doing that down the neck over a D chord. If we're playing. We're used to doing something like this maybe. Okay, but instead let's take some of those ideas back down the neck. Work in that third fret. Indeed, we have here on the tab in measure uh, seven, something much better than what I just played. It sounds like this. And those are the exact same notes. I'm getting this, the second fret that you see here in measure seven, that's the note that I was getting in measure five here. And then when we hammer on from 10 to 11 in measure six, we're hammering on from two to three. So they're the exact same notes, just one octave beneath. Ah! Pretty cool, huh? So you can take any of your patterns that you may do um, down here over that kind of thing, using that second, third fret, and move them up to here. And in the same way, take them back down. We're gonna get into that more in this lesson as we start talking about chokes because there's lots of cool ways that we can use those choke ideas down the neck and then also carry them back up the neck as well. Okay, that's enough for this little video segment. Let's move on down the lesson. I've got at least five more licks for you and I wanna to talk to you about how different chord shapes also work in this manner as well as how we can carry our endings that we're used to playing down here, carry them up here and vice versa. Let's jump right in.